we have some capability of changing our physicality at will. Hello, and we say a fantastic day to you at this moment of your time. We are the Pleiadian Council, and we are very excited to continue these interactions. I want to say it's amazing that you can do telepathy across time and space so that you can answer us in whichever now moment we choose to contact you. So I'm wondering how come you're never asleep or watching television or taking a bath or something when we tune into you? We experience multiple realities at the same time. So while we may be in our own physical bodies in our world, yet in all moments we retain an awareness of the other aspects of our own oversoul. And the information is flowing to us seamlessly. All of these different incarnations that we have play at the same time, almost similar to depictions in your world where there's an individual watching many different screens with many different things taking place. We're not literally watching screens, but we are witnessing and observing and seeing inner energies flow in between multiple realities that our oversouls are a part of. And as beings ascend into higher dimensions, the ability to experience multiple of these different incarnations at once becomes increasingly normal. There is no need to alter our consciousness to receive this information. We are experiencing it all of the time. So we can be having this conversation with you and also doing multiple things and having other different conversations simultaneously from our perspective. Okay. So you don't sleep or eat or these kind of things that we do? We do not anymore. We did at a point. Okay. And there's talk here of beings being in like the seventh dimension, the ninth dimension. Do you use that term? And if so, which dimension would you be in? We see some ways that these terms can distinguish and other ways that they can distort your understanding of these levels of reality. We would say that we are in a quasi-physical reality that traverses the fifth to seventh dimensions in the same way that you as human beings traverse the third to fifth dimensions. There was a time that you mentioned that previously your, um, you, you Pleiadians had helped a, um, you'd helped a civilization that was going wrong in some way and that you regretted very much the intervention because it went wrong. Can you tell us about that again? There were some warring nations, uh, warring planets, you could say, and there was one conflict in particular that we attempted to negotiate with the one party that was not interfering with us, but was an aggressor, and we encourage them to adopt some of our more or less spiritual perspectives. And their reaction caused them to behave in even more aggressive ways. And eventually the conflict escalated to a point that this naive civilization was totally annihilated. And we regretted it as we saw that our attempts to convince them only made their 
struggles worse. And also, there was a karmic overlay that came to affect us for some time. So that has affected your attitude to how you help us today. A lot has changed since then, and we've come to understand in many different ways how to be the best guides to you, and that is to essentially tell you the truth, and also to guide you in understanding source connection through the formula of living through your authentic heart. Okay, there'll be some people who've, who are not familiar with your previous channeling, so could you summarize briefly why it is that you cannot do contact with us? Uh, what's delaying that contact? In order to experience contact with us, you have to meet us in our vibrational threshold. You have to fully embody your fifth dimensional nature in such a way that you experience another dimension of reality that you already exist within, but you are not yet aware of and actively perceiving. This creates a deep change in your psyche and in your body that brings about the purgation of fear-based energies that block the perception of these multidimensional energies. You can only clear these fear-based energies layer by layer, and sometimes you have an experience of emergency or healing emergency or crisis that takes place when there is such a revelation that unloads too much of these fear-based energies at once. And essentially, this is what would happen if contact was a very sudden and spontaneous event. It would cause massive ripples of this fear that would destabilize your world in an unhealthy way. And thus, contact has to happen over a gradual time through increasingly more of these higher frequency energies reaching your world to prepare you as a collective to hold that frequency and enter that dimension. Thanks for explaining that. That's great. You say that it helps you when you channel to us, that you get in contact with source and we get in contact with source. Can you explain more clearly, in particular, if there are people here who say, you know, what is in it for you? What's your agenda? What are you really up to? Can you explain again why you are channeling to us? Well, there are universal laws. One such of these laws is everything you put out comes back. And another such law is all is one and the one is an all. There's only one source and that source is an all beings. And therefore, whenever we do anything positive for any being, that is automatically bringing about positive effects for us. And this is the same for you humans. Whenever you do anything positive to any other being or any other system in your world, you as well get better. You improve. There is another tangent that could be explored at some time discerning who to help and why to help them, which has very much to do with your own passion and excitement. But anytime you are helping, you are being helped, even if it is simply at an energetic level of making you more aware of the interconnectedness of the all that is. Okay, thank you. Um, you said that after the atom bomb, the Galactic Federation selected a handful of ET races to observe planet Earth, including yourself. It sounds as though this is a monitoring and surveillance, and that uh, you're reporting back to some kind of hierarchy. Is that the case? It's not a hierarchy. It is a collective organization. There is not higher and lower members of the Galactic Federation. There are only those who have chosen to be a part of it, who have equal say in the decisions made. So it's not a hierarchy, no. 
Okay, it's more, is it like a telepathic sharing that they see what you see? It's telepathic, yes, we have that ability, though there are also physical meetings that take place on occasion for the purposes of coming together. And how do you see it? Is it, is it progressing well? It's happening well and it isn't happening well. It's happening and it's not happening at all. It depends on the timeline that individuals choose to vibrate with. So we are witnessing all of the timelines play out. We are interacting with you at this moment in which you are choosing a particular timeline and others are tuning into this message to perhaps understand that they may wish to change their own vibration to ride a different timeline of your planet's progression. Right, yes, it, it is quite complex, this idea of the different timelines, but you're engaging in multiple versions of Earth and actually channeling and observing with multiple different versions of Earth. All of those different versions of Earth exist here and now. And are you involved in many, many of these, these levels of Earth? Yes. I think we're complete for this episode. So that's all on this subject. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we thank you very much. We wish you a very fantastic rest of your day then. Cheers. Thanks. On the spaceship of Babel, we are guiding through the stars on a five-year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars. Celestial encounter on a future Noah's Ark And you both hear us coming as we whisper in the dark There's an Ewok just behind me as we try to disembark here And don't you Kenobi as we whisper in the dark Thank you.